Hey everybody, this is Don Gold, the art guy. I'm here to give you another art video to make you a better artist. So many of my art students say, I, w I would paint more if I could just find a good subject. Well folks, that is going to be our focus today. How to pick a good subject to be your inspiration. Now if you look at my uh, display here, you might be thinking, wait a minute, these are old Christmas cards. What can they teach us? Well, Christmas cards are actually little works of art. They can teach you a lot about composition, color, values, and they can even help you to pick a good subject to be your inspiration. So let's take a moment and look at some good subjects and some bad ones too. If you want to pick a good subject, don't pick pictures that have too many details. Some pictures are too busy and tend to confuse not only the artist who's trying to draw and paint them, but the viewer as well. One central theme is best. Now these cards are what not to do. This one here is the mailbox. It's a cute card. But the letters and packages in them are going to be hard to draw because they have too many different angles. And then Santa's Toy Shop here, I think they tried to capture the Christmas magic. But it is way too confusing to me. The colors seem to be fighting each other. And if you look at this snowman here, he's cute. Honestly, though, I think they did too many birds, and then they didn't stop there. They added a kitty, a lamb, and a mouse. These are not good examples of how to pick a subject. So don't pick a subject that is too complicated. Simple is better and can be just as elegant. I want you to take a look at this snowman. Okay, he is cute. Look at the, uh, over here, see how the, the scarf is even complicated. But my guy here has a nice red scarf, a green hat. I even threw in some red birds and a good, and for good measure, a bunny rabbit. Compare the two snowmen. One is complicated, one is not. Now, if you're a beginner artist, I advise you this. Avoid pictures with people, babies, hands, feet, teeth, and multiple folds of cloths. These subjects are interesting, but they require a considerable amount of drawing. And if you're working on a 5 by 7 card, it is not large enough for adequate shading and detail work. Now, let's look over here and look at this picture. This card here has all the things you don't want to have. People, babies, hands, multiple folds in the cloth. Now this picture is a 5x7. But I need to tell you the original picture painting was 20x24 20 or even larger. The larger size enables the artist to do the detail in the hands and faces. Now, if you look at the kittens, they're definitely cute, but the cloth that they're sitting on can be difficult to paint. See all the wrinkles in the cloth? They actually, actually distract from the main subject. Okay, when you are a mature as a, when you mature as a painter, you'll do just the opposite of what I'm asking. You, you're going to want to include in a painting people and babies and hands and feet and teeth and folds. By doing what other artists avoid, you can demonstrate your advanced artistic talent. Now, many people give me calendars, you know, free calendars that have photographs. Beautiful photographs of lighthouses, flowers, and animals. But I suggest that you avoid all photographs if you want to pick a good subject. They, they tend to be flat 
have frontal flashes that wash out all the shading and many painters get so frustrated when they cannot paint their picture just like the photograph. A painting is your personal impression and interpretation of the subject. We don't need another picture of the photo. We already have the photo. Now, if you go back over to the postcards or the uh, Christmas cards, if you'd like a lot of sharp details, don't pick a painting like this one. There is a little bit of detail in the middle and a little bit to the left, but this might not be a good choice. And then go down to this picture. Try, don't try to paint the whole picture. Select a portion or two only. In this one, I would what I would do is I would scrap the house, the snowman, the second fence, and the road. I would paint a nice card with the sled, the fence, the wreath, and the light post. You can keep it simple but elegant. Try to pick subjects to give you a lot of leeway for personal expression. The reference photo or picture is just your inspiration. Make it your own. Use artistic license. Move a tree if you have to. Or add clouds from another picture. Remember, it is your painting. In this art video, I want you to know the most important thing. Analyze what kind of pictures you like most. What do you find interesting? What is your passion? What turns you on and why? Is it the color combinations? Is it the design? Is it the details? Is it the emotions? If you paint what moves you, your painting experience will be more enjoyable and actually you will do better. When new art students come to my adult teen painting class at the community library, they expect that we're going to do a paint along and paint all the same pictures. They are amazed and pleasantly surprised when they find out they get to pick the subject they want and paint that instead. I encourage even new students to find out what they have passion about and paint that. Now, listen, always be on the lookout for subjects to paint. Keep a file folder of painting ideas. Many fantastic paintings are really composites of many painting ideas, such as their favorite clouds, waterfalls, light, uh, lighthouses, trees, etc. So here's what I'd like to end with. I want to show you some good cards. These, these are frogs. Now who ever thought of having frogs at Christmas? But these frogs are playing instruments, there are notes, we threw in a mistletoe. The important thing to do this card is to get the angle of the chairs right. And I think that, that this is a little bit complicated, but it is a fun card. If we go down here to the, you never go wrong if you use a puppy and a kitty, okay, for your picture. And remember last time we talked about brushes, or I guess it was the time before, uh, the comb brush, which is also called the rake or the uh, wisp, can be used to paint the fur, and it will also be used to paint the white part of Santa's hat to make it look soft. Okay. Now, look at this card. Look at it closely. Can you tell who is in the room, but we can't see them? Look at the shadow. The shadow tells the story. It is a clever card. So, here's the important thing. Little Christmas cards can help you pick out a good reference picture to inspire you. Now, some people might ask, Will I ever be able to paint a blank canvas without reference material? And the answer is, sure you will. But most of us paint from experience, and some of us tend to forget some of the details. 
So reference material is just a tool to get you started. I like to think of the reference card as a small box of inspiration. Now, you know what they say. Think outside the box and paint, out, paint your heart out. This is Don Gold, the art guy, signing off. See you next time when I'll share another art video to help you discover your art talent and become a better artist.